whatever condition we have in life. <laughs> Happiness and difficulties. Let us give honor and praise to God. Amen. Amen. And let us give all the glory <coughs> to the one who created us and to the one who saves us. And let us prepare our hearts unto the Lord as we come to the throne of grace to the preaching of the word of God. As Acts chapter 10, 6 verse 16 says, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Now, our message is about our one superlative purpose. What is our one superlative purpose since the time we came to know or since the time we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Remember that it is important to know as we look at the pages of the Word of God as what Acts chapter 26 verse 16 when he said that for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister. Of course, ministering is serving and to be a witness God wants us to minister. Of course, if, if you're a Christian, God wants you to minister for those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. He also says that he wants you to be a witness. You see, he's, he also says here, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Actually, according to Apostle Paul also, in Philippians chapter 3 and in verse 13 says, Brethren, he said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Maybe we have some frustrations, we have some failures in the past that uh, we need to let behind. But let us go, sabi niya rito, to reach forth unto those things which are before. Now, remember that we really, we really have one purpose. We really have one plan. And we really have one program. And we know that one thing is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I like the song says, to God be the glory. Now the question is, can we show to God that we glorify Him? Now, how do we show that we glorify God? Now, there are three things that we need to consider in our message. We seek to glorify the Lord through our divine worship. Number two, we seek to glorify the Lord through the demonstration of His love. And then number three, we seek to glorify the Lord through discovering His grace to others, or to discover His grace to others. Now, like what I said in our first point, we have to seek to glorify the Lord through our divine worship. And as we worship the Lord, we should worship the Lord through the music. Amen? And that's why when we sing unto the Lord, let us Sing. Let us sing. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
ngobrol niya parang nag-aano ka na. Nililipsing. Some are just lipsing. Di ba? When we come to the throne of grace and as we seek to glorify the Lord to our divine worship, we should worship through music. The Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 23, But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. The Father seeketh such. And we know that uh, whether it is joining it with a congregational hymn or choruses, or sabi na po natin, if it is listening as a choir or someone else, share a special number. When we open our hearts, brethren, our minds and our mouths to Him in worshipful expression in song and word, we are showing our love to Him. Amen? Kaya nga, when, when we sing unto the Lord, let's give the best song that we can from the heart. Ayan natin, let other people hear that we are singing as part of our hymn, as part of our worship unto the Lord. Now remember, it has nothing to do with whether uh, we sing in tune or on the key. Or it has nothing to do with talent. Brethren, it, has, it is a matter of our worship to the Lord. Mm. Probably you might have a good voice. But if you are not using it for Him, or if you are not singing for the Lord well, or your life is, uh, is not showing that uh, you're giving your, your, your voice or your music unto the Lord, and the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14 and in verse 15, I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Amen? We know that every time we come to this room and to this place as a place where name is being lifted up. And as we come together for a time that we need to sing, let us feel let us give our best to sing praises unto the Lord, believing that when you sing, the Lord sings with us. Amen. Now, brethren, we should seek to glorify the Lord through our divine worship, and we should worship Him through the music. Amen. We do not need na magkalampagan dito. We have just two uh, instruments that we are using, plus all of us who make a loud voice to sing unto the Lord, we know that God is being glorified in our midst. Amen. We can feel His presence as we give our hearts, as we give our, our voices to sing and worship the Lord to our hymn and to our singing. Now remember, we should uh, worship also not only in music, but we also uh, worship the Lord through the message. Christian, the focal point of the service is the message from the Word of God. Certainly, as we listen to the Word of God, remember that the Spirit of God will deal or is dealing or is deal uh, of, of the Spirit of God deals with our hearts. Amen. The Lord has told us that the Word of God is alive. And it cuts and divides our thoughts and uses, uses it to convict us. Amen? The Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints of marrow, and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And that's why from time to time, maybe some of you felt it, that when you listen to the message of the Word of God, when the preaching is preached with, with boldness and with power, sometimes it cuts, it hurts us, feeling that, 
Natatamaan ako. I feel, I, I, I feel the Spirit of God uh, working in me and I am convicted of my, of my weakness. I am convicted of my shortcoming. I am convicted of my sinfulness. I am, I am convicted of my neglect. I am uh, convicted of whatever faults we made in our Christian life. Bakit dumarating na we, we felt that we are being hurt. You know the reason why? It shows that the Word of God is alive and active. Amen? It shows that the Word of, uh, of God uh, is, uh, it is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So, makikita natin dito mga kapatid that uh, as we listen to the to the Spirit of God, He is dealing with our hearts. It cuts and divides our thoughts. And we know for the loss, He uses the Word of God to draw all men to Himself when the Bible is being preached. Amen? When do you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? In every circumstances of life, it may be reading the Word of God by yourself, and without no, no uh, without uh, understanding it, but when you read it sincerely, you will be you you will have and uh, the the Holy Spirit will will lead you into enlightenment for you to realize that the the the, the words that you are being read. Parang convicting you. Or maybe the word of God is being presented or being preached to you. And as you listen, as you hear to the word of God, the word of God draw you close to God. Kinukonvict niya tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. And as He convict us for our uh, for our transgression and for our sinfulness. And that's the reason why we come to God. Lord, forgive me. Amen. Lord, I come to thee. I trusted thee. I want you to be my Savior. Of course, we know that is the message for the lost. He uses the word to draw all men to himself. And for the believers, we know that he uses the word of God to shape and mold us into what he desires us or for us to become. Right? 1 Corinthians 1, 18 says, For the preaching of the cross to the sinners, to the world, for them it is foolishness. But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen? For unto us, which are saved, we know that oh, we can be empowered by the word of God. Amen. We can be, we can, we, the, the word of God can shape us. The word of God can mold us into what uh, uh, he desires for us to become. Now notice here also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 says, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. We should worship through the message. Kaya nga, we have singing, we have preaching, we have giving. Amen? Yun po yung uh, kabuuan uh, of our worship to the Lord. Of course, service. We should worship not only through music, we should worship through message, we should worship through our ministry. I am not talking about doing something for God, serving Him. Jesus said that it is how the world would know that He loved the Father. In John chapter 4, 14, I'm sorry, verse 31 says, But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Christian, the way we express our love to God is to obey Him. Amen? 
and serve Him. So the question is, are we obeying God in our, in our worship? In the Old Testament, we find time and time again, the Bible says, Love the Lord thy God and walk in His ways. Amen. Mahalin mo ang Panginoon, sabi niya. At lumakad ka sa kanyang mga daan. Matthew chapter 4 verse 13 says, For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. You cannot serve God. Uh, uh, no man can serve two masters. Hindi pwedeng, uh, your, 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 your one, yung isang palmo, your, your one foot is on the other side, and the other side is, you cannot, you have to choose, you have to choose one, one, one Lord. Because the Bible says, no one can serve two masters. Worship must precede work. Amen? Worship must precede work. Before we can be worthy workers, brethren, we must be willing workers. Hindi mm -hmm. pwedeng gusto mo work pero you are not willing. You must be willing workers. No, Mary and Martha. <coughs> Mary and Martha, of course it is uh, uh, sabi natin uh, a comparison of both services. The other one are busy in so many things. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 10 verse 42, but one thing is needful. Mary had chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. What is that good part? That Mary sit beside the Lord and listen to what the Lord says. And in that instruction, there are things that we need to follow. You cannot hear God's instruction without the word of God. So you see, here, brethren, we should worship through ministry. And you cannot serve God without knowing the Bible. We need to be rooted we need to be grounded in the Word of God. You cannot preach others if you yourself do not know your Bible. Amen? You cannot uh, witness about salvation if you yourself are hesitant of your standing and your condition being a saved person. You must know first that you are saved because you can, before you can save others. You, you cannot... Uh, uh, you cannot uh, convict others to serve the Lord when you yourselves are not serving the Lord. You see, brethren, we seek to glorify the Lord through our worship, through, through our divine worship. And number two, we seek to glorify the Lord through the demonstration of His love. John chapter 15 verse 17 says, these things I command you, that you love one another. John chapter 13, verse 35 says, By thee shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one another. Love me or loving? At times, folks will comment, uh, alam, alam po natin na, we we comment on the there are times when when you hear someone telling wow sabi niya, you have a lovely church and sometimes uh, of course a person would reply uh, I, appre I appreciate the compliment but, but I would much rather be known as loving church however that will not come as easy as new coat of paint or some redo, redo, uh, redecorating. It requires effort on our part. Brethren, it is vital 
if we glorify Jesus Christ. God taught us the importance of showing our love. He did it by example. How does Christ show it by example? Remember that God gave His Son as an ultimate demonstration of His love. Amen? God showed uh, His Son as the ultimate demonstration of His love because Jesus gave Himself to demonstrate His love for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How He demonstrated His love is His, his willingness to give up His life for us. Amen? That is what Jesus Christ did. And that's the reason why we're here this morning. We are the product of that love. Amen? We are the product of that love that through His love reaching us, touching us, we experience the loving grace of salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because without the grace of God reaching us, maybe we are we are in some somewhere else right now. Maybe we are in the mall. We're doing something uh, that uh, will will gain our personal needs. You know the reason why we are here is simply because that is what Jesus Christ showed. He showed His love toward us, and we 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 saw how He demonstrated it by dying for us. Amen. Now, Christian, it is our responsibility not just for some but for every child of God it is it is it is for every member of first Filipino missionary Baptist Church that is what uh, reaching out is all about that is our ministry that uh, we, we, we seek to glorify the Lord through the demonstration of our love. We demonstrate our love through, through our faithfulness. We demonstrate our love to God through our worship. We demonstrate our love through our service. We demonstrate our love through our giving. We demonstrate our love through our loyalty. We demonstrate our love through our faithfulness. And we demonstrate our love by reaching us out someone and bring them at the foot of Christ. Every time we reach out to someone in love, we are glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. So in our last point, not only are we seek to glorify God through uh, divine worship, not only we seek to glorify God through the demonstration of His love, we also seek to glorify the Lord through discovering His grace to others or to discover His grace to others. Remember, it is the message everyone must hear. It is the message. Because we know that there is no salvation apart from the grace of God. Amen. There is no salvation. You can be a member of a church without God saving you by His grace. Being a member cannot make you a Christian. Amen. You can be baptized in a true church but without trusting Christ and receiving the grace of God. You can be uh, sabi na natin uh, Immerse several times if you do if if you do not receive the grace of salvation then all of those things are nothing now no, notice here <coughs> it is the message everyone must hear because the bible says there is no salvation apart from the grace of god the message that god loves us and gave his son Jesus on the Calvary that we might be saved. 
this is the important message in the world. And that's why Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. We know that even though our church is very small, we're blessed. No. <clears throat> because personally, maybe we're not reaching out. But through our giving, we, re we are reaching out other people through sending out our support to our missions and to our missionaries. And sometimes they are doing the task for us. But it is much better if we ourselves are doing that also. Not just in foreign mission or in foreign land, but even in our own Jerusalem. Let's start being a witness to the person beside you and bring them at the foot of Christ. We, don't, we do not know for how long are we going to wait for his return. But I can guarantee you as what the Bible says, his coming is sure. His coming is imminent. It is any time. What if the Lord Jesus Christ returns? My question is, have you tried to witness for Christ? Oh, Christian, sad to say that we are no longer doing supposedly that we are supposed to do till he comes. But how many of us are testifying uh, 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 testifying about the love of God? Christian, it is the message everyone must hear. And this is the most important message in the world. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. It has been the message of this church for how many years? It's 2005 when we started here. We, 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 we strived and tried to knock doors for so, several years of uh, uh, doing some some effort of having house to house door knocking and uh, uh, sending someone to, to to many stores, standing and, and 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 propagating the word of God and inviting someone. Even uh, most of them, uh, some made commitment without uh, without coming, and yet we 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 we, we bend our knees before the Lord, praying for them. But listen carefully. Are we still doing it right now? Christian, it has been the message of this church for 12 years. We started here September of 2005. We're organized on December 2nd, Sunday, uh, 2008. We lose members. We, we, we have new people. We lose members. We, we, you know, that's what happened to our church. But we know if we will continue in what we are doing 12 years ago, we can still have new people and new faces. You know the reason why? Because we are not giving birth for a new born sheep. Sino bang nanganganak ng tupa? The Bible says all of us, if we will do that, if each one can bring one, and if each one can win one and bring one, we know you can be a part. Don't just give all the burdens to, to someone who preaches because uh, uh, if each one can do this ministry, alam po natin na we can do greater work for the Lord. Okay. It has been the message of the church for past 12 years. The Bible says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is a message that isn't heard just anywhere. Hindi ko sanat, maririnig ito. Most of the time, the gospel message is watered down and polluted with the humanistic thinking and good works. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ on Calvary was sufficient. We either accept it 
or reject it. When Jesus said it is finished, he meant it. Nothing is to be added and nothing can be taken away. Amen. When he said, salvation is done. All you have to do is to present it. And Apostle Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Why would you ashamed of that gospel if that gospel would save men? Amen. Why would you afraid and ashamed to preach the gospel if the gospel you go will be will be changed unto men? Amen. Why would you ashamed of the gospel if the gospel would call men to serve God? You see, you wouldn't. And that's why Apostle Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I heard somebody says, Minister in witnessing and reaching people, you might not be like great preacher, but when you reach other people, you can produce great preacher through the fruit that you brought unto the Lord. Who knows? Diba? Maybe some of the fruit you brought will call by God and do the task in the field greatly more than what you did. So listen carefully, Christian. Have you trusted and made commitment on what Jesus wants us to do. Of course, it takes a part of our worship to be committed in the whole committed and Egypt. To be committed to the cause of Christ. You know, we are to thank God because God is still giving us a chance to serve Him in the fullness of our strength and our ability. Because one of these days that God is going to close the books where we can serve Him. Serve Him while we have chance and commit while we can do such commitment unto the Lord. Because time will come. Everything is done. Everything will be close. All you have to do at that moment is to worship Him. If you want to serve Him, if you want to commit your life unto the Lord, take a chance. Because we know that God is giving us an opportunity to serve Him with all our heart and glorify God. And glorify God. Let us pray.